in the beginning of God's wisdom, God's creation of the skies and the, and the earth and their contents, when the earth was astoundingly desolate, darkness was on the surface of the deep waters that covered the land. And the throne of God's glory hovered over the water at the command of God's breath. Now, some of this is, of course, in, uh, inserting Rashi into the actual words, but I'm just going to continue. God said, let there be light, and there was light. God saw that the light was good, and, the, and God separated the times of the light from the times of the darkness in the following manner. God called out to night, and out to the light, and he assigned it to the day, and he called out to the darkness, and he assigned it to the night. It was evening, and it was morning, one day. Not the first day, but one day. Now, Rashi, of course, jumps in, and he lives in the uh, 11th century in the middle of France, Germany. He's pretty much one of the first commentators, if not the first commentator, that almost every Shomer Shabbat, Dati, and maybe conservative Jew learns in the world. Probably millions and millions of Jews have learned Rashi's comments, maybe not all his comments, but they're usually one of the first, he's one of the first, if not the first person that people are introduced to in Judaism that they learn what his thoughts and opinions are on the, on the, on the Chumash. And so he writes that the Torah is not given in order, that the Breshit is not in order, uh, chronological order, because he points out that Shem is hovering over, God is hovering over the, over the water, and, but the water was never created. It never says that God created the water. This is one of his first things he says. He also says that it's not, he probably shouldn't even start Breshit. We start, shouldn't start with Breshit, or we should start with Shemot. Because that's actually when we start having mitzvah for the for the Hebrew nation, for the Jews, when it has the mitzvah of of, uh, of Rosh Chodesh, of the new moon. So why do we even learn Bereshit? Like why even start with Bereshit? Um, and he has a whole explanation as to why we start Bereshit. And I want to add that not only is that a, such a good question as to why we start Bereshit, but there's also a lot to it because nobody was even there. And who's even writing this? Nobody was there at the at Zaman creation. Nobody was there on the first day or the second day or the third day or the fourth day or the fifth day. And only on the sixth day was Adam Rishon uh, created according to the Torah, which we're going to get into. But he didn't write the Chumash. He didn't write the Bible. He didn't write the five books. According to Judaism, Moses Rabbeinu was given the Bible, was given the Torah at Sinai. And so, and he wasn't there either. So nobody was there. Not a single person was at creation. All the anthropologists, all the scientists agree. And then nobody was around. Now, every scientist and every, you know, almost every single scientist has now come to say that there was a big bang, a beginning, that the world was in, is not eternal, that the universe is not eternal, that it didn't always exist. Now, that there was an actual belief that the world always existed. But Judaism not only says that the world actually had a creation, we say in our prayers that the world is constantly being created every day. So just think about that uh, big idea as we go forward. So God's creation of the skies and earth, are they talking about the skies of the earth that we sit on or are those, the skies and the earth are, that are in the, the whole entire universe? Because the universe is gigantic and it's, 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 it's expanding exponentially into some, I mean, I don't know, what is it expanding into? Sometimes it's actually talk about that, like God created ex nihilo, right, from nothing. So we created the entire universe uh, and even the Big Bang says that there was nothing. And then all of a sudden there was this Big Bang, which is, you know, a Bereshit, Bara Elohim and HaShemayim Ve'aretz. But what, what is this HaShemayim Ve'aretz? Is it the HaShemayim the arts of our atmosphere and the arts that we're sitting on? Or is it something else? I don't know. Because it was, it was darkness was over the surface of the deep of the waters, which again, God didn't create, God doesn't say, and God created the waters. So we know right away that this is not a biology book. This is not an anthropology book. This is not a book of actual evolution at all. This is a book of theology. And the God throne of glory, whatever that means, hovered over the water at the command of God's breath. And God said, let there be light. And there was light. Now, this is not the light of the sun and the moon or of the stars. Because the sun and the moon and the stars had not been created, they're not really going to be created until day four, as we're going to see. By the way, we're still in the first aliyah, and generally I try to keep my videos to one aliyah at a time, but because this is so an important parsha, such a certain, so important sentences, and almost all of Western civilization hinges 
on and reads and, and has some sort of connection to the five books of the Bible, even you know Christianity and Islam have some connection or a great deal of connection to the book of Bereshit, the book of Genesis. And it really influences many, many millions, tens of millions, maybe billions of people all over the world. I, of course, am just one lonely guy who wants to say what my little saying is, and I want to continue. All right, so I'm going to stop because that was on the first day. God saw that the light was good. It's extremely important that this light that he created was good, whatever that means. And God, what is versus being a bad, right? So we, we already start off that whatever God's creating over here is good for the goodness whatever we perceive good, or however God perceives good. And God separated the times from the light of the times of darkness. God called out to the light and assigned it to the day, and he called out to the darkness and he assigned it to the night. So this darkness that he created wasn't initially night. It was some kind of other darkness. And again, the light initially created wasn't also day. He had to actually call it day, or he separated it, and he actually had to give. So there was some other type of spiritual or physical reality to this darkness and this light. And then, then he calls it night and then he calls it day. Those are separate things. Day, day and night are separate things that God actually calls and gives them specific names. It's extremely important. And it became evening and it became morning in one day. So Judaism starts everything in the evening. Uh, all our holidays started at night because of this verse and it was evening and the morning. So Whenever you talk about the day, you know, what day it is in Judaism or whenever the holidays start, all our, everything that we do religiously starts at night because of this verse and other reasons. Okay, so I'm going to stop this video and we're going to continue the video for uh, a few, uh, the rest of the verses, because as I mentioned, the first day is quite long and quite important. And that's our understatement.